few seconds of the Ahmad Arbery shooting video, it's clear that Roddy Bryan, the person recording, is also driving. Five seconds in, we see Ahmad for the first time. He appears to be running at a consistent pace. At nine seconds, we get the first look at the truck stopped in the road. The driver's side door is open. The man standing outside is Travis McMichael. He is armed with a shotgun. Standing in the back of the truck is Travis's father, Greg. He's armed with a handgun. Two things to notice here as the camera starts to move erratically. Watch Ahmad as he appears to realize what's in front of him. He decides to go around the truck on the right-hand side to avoid Travis. Now, watch it again and think about Roddy Bryan, who is shooting the video. He keeps driving towards the evolving situation and then listen. That sound raises the question, is Brian cocking a handgun from inside the car? Brian maintains he was unarmed. As we break down the next sequence frame by frame, we see Ahmad on the passenger side of the McMichaels pickup. In the next frame, we can only see Greg McMichael, who appears to be holding a phone in his ear with his left hand. We know his right hand is holding a pistol. Now we see that Travis McMichael has moved from the driver's side to the front of the truck with his shotgun, presumably to confront Ahmad. His right leg shows his knees are bent, his head is looking forward. In the next frame, we see Travis has now stepped back, and this is when we hear the first gunshot. The next frame clearly shows that Travis is being pushed back and Armad has his hands on the rifle. Watch as Ahmad releases his hands and hits Travis, first with his left hand, then with his right, as the struggle moves out of frame. Greg, meanwhile, now in the back of the pickup, puts his phone down and appears to ready his pistol. Then another shot. And we see smoke coming from the struggle. At 27 seconds into the video, Travis and Ahmad can be seen again struggling over the rifle. Watch right here. Ahmad pulls his right hand off to try to hit Travis. This gives way to the final shot. The final frame of the 36 second video shows father and son each holding a firearm standing in the street with Ahmad Arbery laying on the ground dying. Joining me now by phone is Roddy Bryan's attorney, Kevin Goff. Kevin, thank you for coming on the program and lending us your time this evening. Good evening. First thing I want to do is just let you have the floor and share anything you'd like to share with us, clarify anything you would like to clarify, please. Well, you know, our primary concern right now is for Roddy. You know, he's got um, uh, basically uncontrolled high blood pressure at this point. The jail's medical staff has done an excellent job trying to address it. Uh, but, you know, we're very concerned about his health. And obviously, uh, we believe he should have been given bond a long time ago. Uh, we have a motion pending, which we expect the court to sit down for a hearing shortly. Gotcha. Okay, so another motion to reconsider the bond, and you're going to cite his health as an issue. Um, and certainly you'll keep us posted on a date. I assume no date set yet for that? We were hoping the first week of December, but we don't have a date for that yet. Okay. And you know, speaking of dates, there is no date set for this trial yet. And I wanted to talk to you about the issue of a speedy trial. Certainly, it's always a consideration in any criminal case for any defendant. And in an interview uh, that you gave earlier this year, uh, you had this to say about the jury selection process. We have this quote. We don't need to spend weeks picking a jury in this case. So why don't we just go ahead and agree now to take the first 12 jurors in the box? Roddy and I are quite comfortable with having this case tried this summer by the good people of Glynn County, end quote. So my question to you tonight is, do you still feel that way? Absolutely. We want our jury trial, and we want it now. Um, we will be filing a motion, uh, a plea in bar uh, sometime next month asking that these charges be dismissed uh, for violation of his speedy trial rights. And uh, at some point, we'll get a hearing on that. Uh, we believe that the, the state of Georgia was able to arrest the McMichaels uh, in 24 hours. Uh, and here we are going into January, and, and we are nowhere close to having this case tried. So we are insisting on our speedy trial. We will file a plea in bar at the earliest opportunity, uh, and we will ask the court to dismiss the indictment with prejudice. 
Okay. Well, certainly whenever that day comes for trial, that cell phone video that Roddy Bryan shot is certainly going to be a critical piece of evidence for both sides of this case. And my question for you tonight, Kevin, is why did Mr. Bryan film that video? Mr. Bryan filmed that video to, to make a record of what was happening. That's why. Uh, and I don't think there's any question as to what his motives were. Uh, there have been absurd suggestions uh, put out in the media by others associated with this case uh, that it was something else. Uh, but the facts and the circumstances are entirely consistent uh, with our position that Mr. Ryan was simply a witness to the shooting. Did Mr. Bryan ever call 911 that day? Well, I'm not going to be getting into the evidence in the case because, among other things, the judge has already expressed concern about the lawyers uh, speaking to the media uh, in this case, including the prosecution. Um, but I don't, I don't believe there's a dispute as to whether he called 911. You, you've heard the video. Uh, he's using his cell phone as a camera uh, during the incident. So, you know, if you hear a 911 call on there, then uh, it's there. But um, the video kind of speaks for itself. So I guess to be clear, are you then confirming he did call 911? Because I don't know that anyone could necessarily recall what was okay. said on that oh, video to a dispatcher. I just want to be very uh, clear whether he did or yeah, not, I, I, and I, I if he did, at what point he called. The video is in evidence, and the video is made with his cell phone. If he called 911, it would be on that call. So the video addresses that question, but I'm not going to speak for Roddy or put his testimony out there. Uh, we're going to try our case in court. Okay. Well, then I guess the other point that could be made, we don't know how many cell phones he had in his possession. That's just why I wanted to clarify, but if you uh, okay, won't answer I'm that, sorry. that's okay. I'm, sorry. I'm not trying to be difficult with you. I, I, I don't think there's a question as to how many cell phones he had. Uh, I, I think you're aware of all the cell phones that were in the vehicle. Um, no, I, I'm yeah. not. That's that's why I'm asking. I'm just trying to be okay. fair and be very clear right. on the facts because I want to be right. accurate. Accuracy is imperative yeah. in our reporting always. So just wanted to ask you for clarification because you would certainly know. And I know you mentioned there has been all sorts of different reporting that's been done out there on motivation for filming. And that's why it's a perfect opportunity to just clarify anything you want to clarify. That's why I asked you that question oh, right at the I, outset. I, I'm sorry. Um, the only cell phone I'm aware of is the one that you're aware of. Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's what I'm aware of. Uh, I know there are people out there that have two and three cell phones. I'm sitting here with three cell phones as we speak. But uh, Roddy's a pretty simple person, and uh, my knowledge, to my knowledge, there's no evidence that there was more than one cell phone involved in this. Okay. All right. We can leave... Uh that's right there. And let's move on to something else. Let's move on to some pretrial motions. I've yeah. noticed you haven't filed any joint motions with the other defendants attorneys. Do you have any plans to file a motion to try to sever your client's case from the McMichaels cases? I do not have any intention at this time of filing a motion to sever. Uh, the deadline if I recall correctly, the deadline to do that is passed, uh, but even if it hadn't, uh, I don't anticipate filing a motion to sever. Okay. How about a motion for change of venue? Is that a consideration at all for you, or do you prefer to, for the case to be tried in Glynn County? Well, uh, as I've already said, we'll take the first 12, if everybody else is comfortable with that. Uh, that's in Glynn County. We, we have no interest in, in a change of venue. Uh, there's no reason why the citizens of Glynn County uh, shouldn't have this case tried uh, in the venue where the crime took place. I remember during the very, very lengthy preliminary hearing back in June, I remember some testimony came out when you were cross-examining one of the detectives on the case. And he testified to finding some text messages on Mr. Bryan's phone that had racist content. Uh, do you have any plans to try to file any motion to exclude that from being introduced by the state as evidence in the trial? We'll file a motion in Lemony at the appropriate time to exclude 
uh, testimony and evidence. It's not, it's not admissible under 403 or 404, but, you know, we'll see where that goes. Uh, uh, the McMichael defendants uh, are going to be filing similar motions. Uh, the state's already filed uh, its own motions with respect to these issues, uh, and the judge will have to address them. Now, speaking of the judge, I understand that at the bond request hearing in July, where bond was denied, obviously, for Mr. Bryan, you were upset about some things that the court put on the record at the time of announcing the decision that he would not be given a bond. Uh, could you elaborate on that, please? Well, with all due respect, I I've been less than pleased with a lot of things that have happened uh, over the course of the case. You probably have to refresh my memory. Uh, obviously, we were disappointed uh, that Roddy was not granted a bond. He should have been then, and he should be now. Um, it was my so understanding there was something and... conveyed at the time of the announcement of the court's decision that it's, it, it's my understanding that there was a comment with respect to the GBI investigation that was kind of intertwined with the announcement of no bond. Does that help refresh your memory? It, it does. I think I know what you're referring to. Um, you know what, if the GBI has another case to make against uh, Mr. Bryan, then they need to go ahead and do that. Um, you know, we can't decide bond questions on speculation uh, by the Cobb County District Attorney's Office. Uh, if there's something to look at, then let's look at it. And if there's not, then let's move on. Uh, these kinds of sideshows and distractions uh, don't serve the cause of justice. Understood. All right. We have to leave it right there, but certainly appreciate your time. Attorney Kevin Goff, thank you kindly for being with us tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good evening. You as well.